function okay uh, Mobius would answer this but uh, okay, we consider a generalization of the Mobius function number theory that is uh, so we have the definition now I give a opposite definition for poset so we have a poset we have a finite interval and we define this thing recursively so if x is equal to y the value mu x y is one Otherwise, we can, uh, we can find the, the, the value of the Mobius function in x and y by using uh, so the values that we find before. So starting from y, we compute move y, y, and so on. And we have the Mobius function of x and y. OK, this is a general context, but we are group theorists, young group theorists. Ah, no, OK. This is the generalization of the classical Mobius function. OK, we are young group theorists. So I present the Mobius function in the group context. So here in this talk, G will be always be a finite, will always be a finite group. And L of G is uh, the subgroup lattice of G. And the Mobius function is defined in the same way for uh, for lat for uh, posets in general. I use this notation uh, when I write mu G H, I just mean mu H G. But the part is the definition is the same. So the value of, of the Mobius function in G. So, so I define the Mobius function of G and I fix this, uh, this term. And so I have the Mobius function of, of G in G, that's one. And then the Mobius function of G in H for a proper subgroup of G that is defined recursively by the values of the overgroups of H in G. And it has, uh, so it, it has been studied because it had uh, many applications, or some interesting application in probabilistic group theory. So the first one who introduced the Mobius function was Philip Hall uh, to express. So he was studying uh, generating problems for finite groups. And he also expressed the probability that a k-tuple of elements in G generate the group in this way, so using the Mobius function. And there is also a version in the profinite context that uh, produce some interesting conjectures that maybe I will, I will say something later. And otherwise, there are applications in topology. So one can consider uh, simplicial complexes obtained by the structure of poset of the subgroup lattice and, and, uh, and study some topological objects like the Euler characteristic of, of them by using the Mobius function of the group G. There are some results from book, down. OK. Uh, OK, usually, OK, I, I, I prefer to give some example just to fix the idea. So for example, in the symmetric group, the Mobius function in the maximal groups is always minus 1. And then we can obtain the, the value of the Mobius function in the trivial subgroup 1, which is 3. So in general, the Mobius function is not only the values 0, 1, minus 1 as the classical one, but any value in a z. And OK. Uh, as an example, John Sharation computed that actually for uh, symmetric groups uh, of degree p, so for the symmetric group in p, in p the, the, the value of the Mobius function in the trivial subgroup is p factorial over It is an example. OK, also, I always uh, present this property that it is, so it's not so difficult to prove, but it is very important. So when one try to compute the Mobius function, I have to remember that uh, the Mobius function of h is different from 0. Uh, so this fact implies that the subgroup h is, a, is an intersection of maximal subgroup of g. And 
Okay, I, I, I close here, so we can, we can take the maximal subgroups that contain a, sub, a subgroup H, and we take the intersection of them, and okay, we can just see that if H is properly contained in this intersection, then the Mobius function in H is equal to zero, and this comes by applying the, okay, we can write in this way, and then we apply the property definition of the Mobius function. In this case, for J, okay, this value is zero. And then for the, the subgroups K, so in this case, L, that, are not, that uh, do not contain H. No, okay, they uh, do contain H, but are not contain, uh, such that intersection of the maximum subgroups do not contain L. Uh, one can prove by an inductive argument that uh, the value of them, in, the Mobius function in them is always zero. And so one of them, this part is zero. So we have that if H is not an intersection of maximal subgroups, then the Mobius function of H in H is equal to zero. Uh, okay, now I, I give some result. So if G is an important group, okay, Kratzer and Trevena studied this, this, uh, this function in, uh, in the topological context. They prove that if G, for example, is important, then uh, we have also the, the, converse, the converse implication. So if H is an intersection of maximal subgroups, then the values of the Mobius function in H is from zero. But this is not in general true. And here I want to give another example, just to say, also we can consider a very sort of solvable group of small order. And in this case, okay, the maximal subgroup are the blue one and this one, and the green subgroups at the intersection of the black one with the blue one. Again, one is an, is an intersection of maximal subgroups, but the, the value of the Mobius function in one is equal to zero. And this is not a sporadic example, so there are many examples that you can consider. So the behavior of this function is not easy to, to understand. Uh, so we focus on subgroups such that the Mobius function is different from zero, and we would like to give some characterization or to count them. I will explain why later. But uh, so by the characterization, I mean, okay, Maybe we can say that uh, if the Mobius function is a, in H is different from zero, not only H is an intersection of maximal subgroups, but this subgroup, so the index of uh, these subgroups factorize the index of H in G. And, uh, okay, this is about the characterization. Ah, and, ah, this if G is solvable, but if G is not solvable, there are similar results that are longer and more complicated to explain, but there are similar characterization, always uh, from Lucchini for uh, subgroups such as the Mobius function different from zero. And count them, I mean, okay. I mean, for example, result of this uh, type. So we can consider, for example, G a alternating group or symmetric group. And then we can say that the probability of finding a subgroup such that the Mobius function is in H is different from zero tends to zero, as n tends to infinity. So the number of these subgroups is, uh, is more with respect to the cardinality of the number of all subgroups of this. Uh, okay, so now I denote by BMG the number of uh, subgroups such that the index of H in G is M and the Mobius function in H is different from zero. And here there's this conjecture okay, that comes from the prof profinite context. So Mann tried to study these, uh, so there are some works from Mann and also Shalev that try to relate the Mobius function to the probability. Um, so they want to characterize that to, to find an analytic uh, function, okay, some, uh, they study the probabilistic zeta function associated to positively financially generated profanic groups, and they formulate some conjecture that can be, re so a, a famous conjecture is, can be reduced in this way. So, I'm looking at conjecture that there exists an absolute constant A, alpha, such that for every finite or most simple group G, the number, this number BMG is, uh, so it grows polynomially with respect to the index. For, so this constant is absolute, so holds for every almost simple group. And the conjecture has been proved by Colombo and Lucchini for, uh, for alternating and symmetric groups for an equilibrium factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I 
also cannot move it along. How many more slides are there? Mm, uh, I, I don't remember. I... Should I try and skip to the next one somehow artificially? Because there's nothing I can do. <laughs> I can close the file and open it again. That's something I can do. Just a second. Now you can see everything I'm doing. Where were we? Which slide? No, it contains something that it doesn't like. I'm sorry, I can try and jump to a page further down the road. Where roughly do you think you were? Let's try. Ah. No, it doesn't like this. I'm very sorry. So. There is a problem. I can try and open it with another program. That's the last thing I can try. And otherwise, I'm afraid you will have to improvise and just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will try. Of course, I will. So it's not the okay. It's not the reader that's the problem. There's something with the file. Um, Sorry, so, I can't uh, do anything. Uh, Maybe you can connect your own laptop or something. Do you have oh, it? So what can I say? If I have to remember uh, the next slide. Okay, here there was, okay, here there is a question. And the question is, okay, we know we have an answer for the, the alternating and symmetric group. And the question is, what can we say about the, the finite classical groups? And that's why the file is called the Mobius function of finite classical, classical groups. And here I wanted to explain some technique to attack the problem and to find a characterization of subgroups. In, uh, maybe I can try to, to okay. Blackboard, maybe? Like, yeah. Uh, Yeah, there was a question, the question. This is the reason why I prefer the right. Classical groups. Uh, so the idea, okay, here I want to present a technique to, so we have a, H. Okay, the, the classical groups that I consider are G of like GLD or PGLD. So, because we are interested in almost simple groups, so actually, we'd like to give an answer to the conjecture of PGLD or PSLD, where V is F Q to the N. Uh, and the idea here, okay, no, no, it has to say that uh, I want to introduce, I want to introduce uh, this closure operator for uh, for set, but um, so we can see, okay, if H is such a subgroup, we can define this object that are uh, the subspaces of V such that uh, 
w is invariant by every h in the, in the subgroup. And, uh, and I define close subgroup of G. OK, I can consider K an irreducible subgroup of G. Uh, I define the closure of H as the intersection for W in this set of the stabilizer in so now it is the big the largest subgroup that has the same uh, SOH of H. So if if it, the the same such as the uh, exactly the the invariant subspaces for H is the are uh, fixed also by this H bar. Yeah. Okay. So we H, H bar. It is called a closure operator because uh, it has the same property of the closure of the topological sub um, the topological closure uh, the, the closure of the topology. And so we define these kind of subgroups closed subgroup of G. First, uh, as other one here, you have a proposition that if H is a subgroup of G, and such that, no, okay, you can always express the values, the Mobius function of G, as sum Conclusion is that uh, if it's different from zero, then H can be written as an intersection of a irreducible subgroup K with a close So we can say, so this is, this is what a proposition. And so we can say that the conjecture for, of um, for e, e, Q holds 
if uh, if the number uh, the number irreducible bounded polynomially by an absolute constant alpha 1 for every independent and the number of closed Also, in this case, okay, bounded by polynomially by m uh, with respect to another, okay, could be the same absolute constant. Independent of n and q. And uh, so we can reduce the study of the number. Ah, yeah. <laughs> So actually, we do not have to consider all the subgroups, but just the reducible subgroups, and then find an answer also for these closed subgroups that are not all the reducible sub subgroups of the not all the reducible subgroups in G. And, and results for the second part in this one, the last slide. So, uh, in, so. It is interesting, I think, to study this kind of result. They can be studied, so this, the number, so all these numbers, uh, uh, I call it gamma of G. Uh, this number Studying this thing, I, I find out that uh, if M, no, okay, okay, no. So, so if uh, C is a, a cyclic matrix, that means that the minimal polynomial of C is equal to the characteristic polynomial of C, uh, SOH, and uh, okay, the subgroup. Is uh, as the structure of a product of chain. That means okay, I can take two chains. I mean chains of subspaces, and every uh, any other subspace is a jo is a join of the subspace on the on the two chains. So they have this nice uh, structure, the this S O H, that allows to to conclude that. Uh, the number of uh, the I don't remember, uh, the number of uh, I don't remember my question. So, uh, the number of closed subgroups such that uh, S O H is a product of chains grows polynomially. Uh, with respect to an absolute constant uh, alpha. And these cyclic matrices are very, are very interesting because the proportion in GL and Q has been studied by Prager and others. And they appear, many, so the probability of finding this type of matrix is really, really high. So almost all matrices in uh, GL and Q and SL Q are of this factor. So this, this is done, and I think that it could be interesting to, to study what happens if we consider a subspace, a uh, sublattice of, of this. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. <laughs> sorry for uh, the inconvenience of the slide. I'm sorry too. Thank you for improvising. <laughs>